Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at using the replace symbol option in Illustrator. Now I'm going to create a sheet of scrapbook paper so I'm going to click here on create new and I'm going to create a document that is 12 inches by 12 inches in size. So here I have 12 inches by 12 inches. I'll click create. Now I'm going to create this with a shape. So I'm going to my star tool here. I'm going to click in the document. Now the problem here at this stage is that I'm working with inches as my measurements, but I'm just going to make this 50 pixels for now. And then the inside radius for the star is going to be half of that. So I'll make it 25 pixels and a five pointed star. I'll click OK. So this may be too big or too small of a star, but at this point you can just resize it to suit. I'm going to color it. So I'm going to the swatches panel. Of course, you can get to that by choosing window and then swatches. So I'm going to fill it because I have the fill option selected here with a pale pink and I'm going to give it a dark pink stroke and I'm going to increase the stroke weight quite considerably. Let's just size this down because I don't want it to be nearly as big. So I'm going to place it up here in the top corner of the document. Now, now I'm going to create this scrapbook paper using symbols. And the reason for this is that it's going to be very easy for me to update this design. So with my star shape already selected, let's go to the symbols panel. Again, you can get to it by choosing window and then symbols. I'm just going to click here on the plus symbol and it's going to be a dynamic symbol. The registration points in the middle. Don't worry about anything else. Just click OK. Now there is a limitation with symbols and that is that you can't expand anything that includes a symbol without also losing the symbol feature. So if I want to be able to copy this shape across the document, I can't use the effect and distort and transform transform option, which I normally would, but I can do it by hand very easily. So I'm going to hold down the alt key on a PC. That's option on a Mac. I'm just going to drag this across so that it's placed at 0.75 inches. That's a good distance between these two stars. Now with this shape still selected, I can continue and press Control or Command D to copy this star across the document. Once I've got it all the way across the document, I'm going to select everything. And again, Alt or Option drag down a little bit. And then with everything still selected, Control or Command D. Now I'm not worried if this isn't perfect. You can see that things have moved a little bit. That's just fine because what we're going to do is to create a sheet of scrapbook paper that's a little bit whimsical. And so we're actually going to move these shapes anyway. But you'll see here in the last panel that we just have a whole lot of symbols. So I'm going to select everything and to make a sort of whimsical design here, I'm going to choose object and then transform and transform each because I can use the transform each option because that's not going to be affected by the fact that this is a symbol. Now I want some of my stars to be smaller and some of them to be bigger. So I set this to 80%, but let me just set this back to what you're going to see and we'll have a talk about why we're using what we're using. So to make some of these shapes smaller, I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical to 85%. So they're going to be smaller. But you can see that as I did that, every single one of these shapes became smaller. But if I use the random option, then some of them are going to become smaller and some of them are going to stay the same. And some of them are not going to be 85%, they might be 90%. So essentially what we're saying to Illustrator is scale somewhere between 85% and 100% every one of these shapes, but do it in a random way. Now I have the bottom corner of these shapes selected as my rotation point and I can now just rotate them around. Now this is a star shape. So if I rotate them around 72 degrees, I'm going to get a whole heap of rotated stars. There's no value in rotating these any further than 72 degrees because it is a sort of even shape. I got to that value by dividing 360, which is number of degrees in a circle by five and 360 divided by 5 is 72. So we've got full rotations on these stars. And now we can move them should we wish to do so. So I can just tap in here to move them a little bit. Now they're being moved in quite a large amount by 
0.125 of an inch if you wanted a bit less you can just put in the pixel value there but I'm just looking here to see how everything looks there are not a lot of overlapping stars and that's a concern to me if they were overlapping so what I'm going to do is just move around this 85% and just see if I can get a bit of difference in how these stars are positioned so all I'm looking for is the best possible result that I can get with not too many overlapping stars. I think this is pretty good. I'll click OK. At this point, you can move the stars in from the edge if you don't want them to be over the edge of the document. And you can also move any stars away from each other if they're overlapping. But here, I don't have anything that I'm seeing that is overlapping. I just have a few that are slightly over the edge of the artboard. And if I don't want that to be the case, then I can move them in. And of course, I could move shapes a little bit closer to the edge of the artboard if I think that there are areas that need filling in. But I'm pretty happy with this as a sheet of scrapbook paper, but let's finish it off by adding a rectangle of color behind it. I'll just click and add a rectangle that is 12 by 12 inches. It's coming in with the same appearance as the stars. I don't want it to have a stroke, so I'm turning that off. And in terms of a fill, let's go with a light fill for now. I'll choose Object Arrange and Send to Back because I want it to be behind everything else. And I'm going to click on these options to center it on the artboard. Now, if yours isn't centering on the artboard, you can go to Window and Align and just make sure that it's set to Align to Artboard. If you don't see all of these options, you can just click this little button here and that will display all of the options that you have available to you. At this point, I'm going to lock down the very bottom layer here. So I'm just going to the layers panel, I'm going all the way down to the end. I'm going to lock down this rectangle. The reason for that is that I want to be able to change out this star shape. So I would go ahead first of all and save this so that I would have a sheet of scrapbook paper that is based on stars. And having done that, let's see how easy it is to use the replace symbol option to change this shape. So let's go and first of all create a small square. I'm going to zoom into it because I want to set this square up to be something that I can use for my pattern. So I'm going to choose a fill color and a stroke color for it. I'm going to size it. And so this one I'm going to use pucker and bloat. So I'm going to effect and then distort and transform and pucker and bloat. Make sure preview is enabled and let's just see what we can do with this. One of the lovely things about pucker and bloat is that it does allow you to create these little floral shapes very easily. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to select over it and because it's a shape with a pucker and bloat effect on it, I'm going to choose object and expand appearance because this isn't a symbol yet, so it doesn't matter that I'm using expand appearance on it. To make it a symbol, with it selected, I'm going to the symbols panel and I'll just click the plus sign, make sure that it's a dynamic symbol, click OK. Don't need this any longer, I'll delete it. So back in my document, I'm going to turn all of these stars into flowers and they're not going to lose the size, the rotation or the placement in the process. So I'll select over everything. You know that I already went ahead and locked down the rectangle at the back of everything. So that's really important because the only things that we want selected right now are symbols because if you only have symbols selected, then you get this option up here on the toolbar, which is replace. And we can click the drop down list and replace the existing symbols with this new symbol. Now, can't see things very clearly because my background color isn't very good. So let's just go and change the color on this rectangle. So target the fill and let's go and get a different color to use. So here is a second sheet of scrapbook paper using the exact same rotation and size that we had for the first sheet, but this time we're using a different shape. And we can continue to create shapes and then use the replace symbol option to replace these little flowers with the shape that we've just created. So again, let's go and do that. I'll make a three-sided figure this time scale it a bit smaller, make sure that it has a stroke if that's what I want it to have. So I'm going to give it a blue stroke. This time I'm just going to use the triangle itself. I'm not going to pucker and bloat it, so I'll select it, 
go and add it to the symbols panel just using the plus sign here. Delete it because I no longer need it. Select everything, making sure of course that this background rectangle is locked down so we can't select it. That will give us access to the replace option up here. Drop it down and click on triangle. Now again, I've got a problem in that the triangle that I've created actually uses a color that is in this background rectangle, but that's easily changed. And here is our third piece of scrapbook paper. We haven't had to do anything in terms of duplicating these shapes, moving them, scaling them. Everything is just perfect. We've just changed the shape in use and we've done that using symbols in Illustrator. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned things about working in Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.